Thank you for that very beautiful music, and it is wonderful to be here. Good morning. Happy Sunday. And happy first Sunday of the season of Epiphany. Epiphany, January 6th, begins this season after Christmas. Epiphany, and the season of Epiphany takes us up to Ash Wednesday when we begin Lent. Welcome to Cool Water, whether you are here in person or whether you are wherever life has you at this moment. Let's take a moment and greet one another. If you are comfortable in so doing, please stand up, walk around, and if you prefer to just be greeted from a distance, just stay where you are and wave. Let's take a moment and greet each other this morning. Good morning. Good to see you all here today. And as we begin our worship service with those wonderful songs that we enjoyed this morning, I invite you to pay attention to the words because they are part of the worship service. And if you didn't notice, the songs this morning had to do with the wise men. And that it kind of wraps up kind of our Christmas scenario. And we will be talking about what their trip signified what it means for us today. Something to think about as we head into the season of Epiphany, and there's a reason that we end with the wise men. It's kind of an ending and a beginning, ending of the Christmas time, beginning of Epiphany. As we come to this time of prayer, I want to lift up Greg McCauley 
Greg's mother died on New Year's Eve and she was able to be around family and we are grateful for that. Greg, we lift you up and all your family in our prayers. It is great to see Diane here with a boot, but here, that's the most important thing. We're glad that your recovery has progressed to the point that you're able to be back here with us. Chris Bonta is at her sister's and we continue to lift up her as she is recovering and doing better, we are glad to report. Any other cares and concerns or joys to lift up? Well, I'm going to join probably lots of pastors in Georgia. It can't hurt to ask prayers for the Georgia Bulldogs. Absolutely. How about them dogs is what, is what you say. I teach my kids the Georgia kickoff cheer the first day of every school year, and we do it every Friday through the football season. I will not make you suffer through that. It is such a joy to gather, to be able to share laughter, to be able to share in cares and concerns, to bear one another's burdens. Because what we are as Christians, people called to share life with one another, share life that we know in Christ with all its ups and downs. And the most wonderful thing is that we know that whatever we face, we are not alone, for Christ is with us and so are those brothers and sisters in Christ who surround us. With that understanding, with that blessing, let us go to our Lord in prayer. God of light, you bring hope to our world and joy to our lives. We pray, O oh God, that you would open our eyes to the light of your star and open our hearts to the needs of others. Help us not be content to be in the shadows where less seems to be demanded of us. Keep us from moments of dark depression and worry about the future that would dim our faith. Help us to look ahead, knowing that you are with us in all things. Help gentle words, caring, compassionate hearts, overpower anger and violence. Let hopes outshine the shadows of despair. Help us to share our gifts rather than greedily holding on to them. Enable us in our abundance to embrace the stranger and the needy, to see where there is need because you have led us to that place and shined light on the world around us. We lift prayers for those places in our world in need of your light of reconciliation, of forgiveness, of understanding. Grant that the peace that passes all understanding may settle upon us and upon all the nations of the world, knowing that no amount of darkness can overcome the light that has come into our world in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
And so today, as the Magi did so long ago, we journey to offer our gifts and ourselves to the Christ. We lay before Him the realities of our life, both good and bad. We offer our joy and love and laughter that they may be made holy. We relinquish our bitterness and hatred and worry that we might be made more whole. Send your star to shine on us and lead us afresh to serve and witness to the embodiment of love revealed in the child of Bethlehem. You have shown us a glimpse of your kingdom of love and light. For this, we give you thanks and recommit our lives to your purposes and offer our gifts to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Um, I think it's customary for many of us uh, at the beginning of the year to reflect back on our year and think about all we have to be thankful for, and we have a lot to be thankful for. I'm thankful that we're all here this morning and healthy, and I look back and, and reflect, and you know, I, I've been blessed, as I'm sure many of you feel you've been blessed. One of my blessings is being a part of this congregation. And so this morning, on behalf of the congregation, uh, I want to thank our staff for all that they do for us, all they've done for us in this last year, and all they, they do for us um, as we go forward in our ministry. So um, we took a um, donation from the congregation, a love offering, and I'd like for Rick and Karen and Dale to come up and receive their gift from this congregation with our, with our, our love and appreciation uh, for all you do. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I, it, I would be remiss if, if I didn't acknowledge the, our musicians and singers and players up here. Uh, sometimes you notice that there's five or six or seven of us, and sometimes you notice that there's one or two. This year has been stressful on uh, putting the music together, and I'd just like to thank them for having a couple of great attributes. One is patience, and the other is forgiveness. And so that, that's really helpful when we're, when we're trying to work with, uh, with the music. And I really appreciate you guys hanging in there and coming out when you can and, and just making this all work. Thank you. And Dale, one of the things that you have done is you have brought a variety of instruments and styles to bless our worship. Thank you for that and for working with all the people that you have. All right, kids, time to come up. And as you come up, I also want to tell you that when the children's moment is over, you need to go and sit back where you were. There's no uh, program for you this morning. All right, so what do I have here? A box. How would you describe it? Brown. Brown and? Empty. empty. Uh-huh. Well, what do I have here in these in this? Hmm? A little Santa. Uh-huh. So how, a, a Santa, reindeer, okay. Okay. 
Santa mug. Yeah. Well, do you think they're going to be out in my house the whole year? No. Is Christmas stuff still out all over your house? At it, there comes a time where you put it away. You know, and that always used to be a really, really kind of sad time for me. It was, okay, well, it's really, really over. I'm putting everything away. Lights are coming off the tree, ornaments coming off the tree, everything's put away. So, time to pack up. Uh, there's a reindeer, there's a Santa, there's a moose, not just any moose, mooseltoe. And my mug, all back in there. Did I forget anything? Oh, I have a whole nother bag. What's in here? Do any of these have to do with Jesus? No. Do you think these might have something to do with the Christmas story about Jesus? What are these? Angels. Angels. Something that I finally got wise and started doing was leaving these out. And they stay out in my house all the year. An angel with a horn. An angel carrying it's a candle, a light. And I leave these up to remind me that while the Christmas stuff may be packed in the box, and the box may go back wherever we keep those boxes, is what Christmas is really all about. Is that over? No. Because Jesus is with us all through the year. Jesus was God's gift to us for always. I keep this angel out to remind me of that good news. And I keep this angel out to remind me to follow the light of the world that came into the world in Jesus. So, although it's all put back in the boxes, these remind me it's not over. And it's my task now to proclaim the good news and follow the light. And that's your job and your job also. Thanks for coming up. All right.
pam 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 I am a poor boy to pa rum pam 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 I have no gifts to bring pa rum pam 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 To lay before the king pa rum pam 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 rum pam 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 rum pam 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 Shall I play for you pa rum pam 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 on my drum Mary nodded pa rum pam 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 The ox and lamb kept time pa rum pam 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 I played my drums for him pa rum pam 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 I played my best for him pa rum pam 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 rum pam 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 rum pam 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 Then he smiled at me pa rum pam 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 Me and my drum Me and my drum Me and my drum Me and my drum Today's scripture is from the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. The Magi visit the Messiah. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all of Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I, too, may go and worship him. After they heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Pam. So, a picture of the wise men. Now, I want to start with a few questions to see how wise you are. 
about the wise men. All right, so my first question is, what were the wise men? And here are your choices. A traveling comedy team, government bureaucrats, or well-educated scholars? C, well-educated scholars. Very, very good. How did they get there? A, camel, B, horse, C, chariot, D, we really don't know. There's no mention in the scriptures. D, we really don't know. There's no mention in the scriptures. Although, popularly, they are pictured riding on camels. We looked into getting camels for our drive-in nativity, but when we found out the going rate was $600 an hour, we decided we could do without camels. What did they follow? A, a star, B, a supernova, C, a comet, D, it could have been any of those. D, it could be any of those. We're not really sure what the star was. But somehow, they were guided to the place where Jesus was. All right. Names of the three magi. A, Barnaby Jones. B, Indiana Jones. C, James Earl Jones, or D, nobody named Jones? D, nobody named Jones. Names of the Magi, part two. A, Athos, Porthos, Aramis. B, Mo, Larry, and Curly. Or C, Gaspar, Melchior, and Balthazar. C, Gaspar, Melchior, and Balthazar. Now, we don't know their names. It's not written. There's a lot of things that are not written about the Magi that have just become kind of church tradition. They kind of have come into our conscious. In fact, the song, We Three Kings, was written in 1857 by a music teacher at a seminary in New York for a Christmas pageant. And from this carol, most people had their knowledge of the wise men. We think they're kings. They brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Their names, and there were three names associated with them. Gaspar, Melchior, Balthazar, from way, way back in early times in church history. But none of those things, except for the gifts, are scriptural. We even have the Magi showing up at the manger in the nativity scenes. But did you notice where they went to from the scripture in Matthew? Did you hear the word manger? No. They went to the house where Jesus was. Not a manger. We don't know exactly when they arrived. We don't know exactly how they got there. We don't even really know how many there were. The reason we think of three wise men is because of the three gifts. We don't know how many. A lot we don't know. But there are some important things that we do know. They traveled on a journey 
that would not have been easy. They weren't taking a trip from here up to Flagstaff to go and play in the snow for a day. They traveled a far distance, perhaps from Persia over to the area of Israel, somewhere where Jesus was. It would have been a difficult trip. It might have even been dangerous. They were carrying precious gifts. But we know that they made the journey because they knew something special had happened. How did they know that? Well, there's all kinds of speculation. It could have been that even back in the time of Daniel, when the Jewish people were exiled in that area, that prophecies were revealed, and a group of scholars followed these prophecies for years and years, looking for a sign that would be fulfilled. Perhaps it was this one from Numbers 24, 17, that Matthew has in mind, which says, A star shall rise from Jacob. Or Isaiah 61, 3, Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. There is an element of the fulfillment of prophecy in both Matthew and Luke in their Gospels, include stories about the birth of Jesus. And one of these huge elements in both stories is this fulfillment of the promise that God made to the people Israel. And Luke and Matthew show this promise fulfilled in different ways. Luke, with the story of the Annunciation to Mary, that she will bear the child, the traveling to Bethlehem, the shepherds and the angels, and then they go to the manger. In Matthew, with the wise men, following this star that they had seen that was a sign that the king had been born. And they went to worship him. Now why is this significant in both Gospels? Because think about it. In Luke, the good news is revealed to humble shepherds. The good news is for all people, not just the mighty and the powerful. And Jesus wasn't born in a palace, but a stable. In Matthew, while they may have been learned scholars and might have been high up government officials, they were foreigners. They were Gentiles. They were not of the chosen people, but yet God called them to come. So, this child, born in Bethlehem, is born to be the Savior of all people not just the rich and powerful, not just the wise, not just the chosen people of Israel. This is a savior for all the people. And the wise men had seen the signs and they followed that star and they brought gifts. Gifts fit for a king. And it's no mistake 
that gold, frankincense, and myrrh were the gifts. Those just aren't lying around. You don't go to Beth and Body Works and pick those up and take them on your journey. They were for a specific purpose. And that's why Matthew includes them in the gospel. With quite a bit of symbolism and foreshadowing. Gold, gold attributed to Gaspar, if you're going to identify a wise man with the gift. Gold, because this is the king of kings born to rule the nations. Gold for the king. Frankincense, frankincense associated with Melchior. Frankincense is an aromatic incense. And incense was used in worship. And so the idea is that Jesus was not only king, but he was the one that God had sent to be above all. The divine. Jesus, King of kings, Lord of lords, Emmanuel, God with us. And myrrh. If you look at any listing about myrrh, you will see that it was also a very rare commodity but it was used for anointing of prophets, and it was also used for embalming, for preparing the dead for burial. How many baby lists have you seen and on the gifts of things you want is myrrh? This fragrant, bittersweet ointment used for embalming. So why that gift? Why that gift to a baby? To this baby? Well, there's the foreshadowing part. This baby was not just any baby. This baby was the Christ. And in fulfilling God's purpose, Jesus, after his ministry, suffered and died for us. And myrrh was probably one of the spices gathered by the women when they prepared his body for burial. And so with this inclusion at the beginning of the gospel, Matthew foreshadows the end, that Jesus would go to the cross and that he would die and he would be buried. That's the significance of the myrrh. But one other thing that the myrrh points to that we might tend to overlook Myrrh was to be used to prepare a body for burial, for someone sealed in a tomb. But there is also the foreshadowing with myrrh that the tomb did not stay empty and that there was resurrection of the Savior and salvation for all. This child, born a king, born God with us, born to live, to teach, to preach, to show us God's love for us and born to die, would bring new life, resurrection life, foreshadowed the whole of the gospel in those three gifts. There's a lot to this story. 
but we're not done yet. Because you know how it ends with Pam reading that they didn't go back and tell Herod, hey, Jesus is not in Bethlehem any longer. He's here, forever here was. No, they were warned in a dream to go home a different way. And so they did not go back to Herod. What did that dream tell them? We don't have any idea. But it was sufficient to cause them to not go back there. And Jesus was born into a perilous world. And there's that hint of it, that element of it, in this story from Matthew. Being warned in a dream, they went back another way. Because Herod did not have worship in mind. So Jesus was born into a perilous world. And Jesus asks us to go into a perilous world. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians 4.10, says, We are fools for Christ. So Jesus invites us to go into a perilous world, to be foolish. Don't play it safe. Go into the world. That is where you are sent. So what do we learn from the wise men? They sought Jesus. And when they found him, they worshipped him. They brought gifts to honor him. And when they left, they went out into the perilous world but the way that God had sent them. There's something in that for all of us. Seeking Jesus, worshiping Jesus, giving our gifts, giving ourselves to Jesus, and then going out into the world where God sends us to live and to serve for Christ our Lord who gives us new life. Because that story doesn't end there with the wise men and the completion of our Christmas nativity scenes. We have foreshadowing of where the story goes. And now, it's our turn to be like the wise men and seek Jesus and seek to serve him and give him gifts fit for a king. Amen.
So, sometimes we hear a song like As With Gladness, and the tune is familiar, the words are different, and while we're singing it, you're thinking to yourself, why do I know that tune? Where have I heard that tune? As with gladness, is sung to the same tune as for the beauty of the earth. So if you were sitting there going, okay, I know it, that's why. A lot of songs are like that. They take words and put it to a familiar tune so that people may sing along and sing words that have meaning, different words, but they can sing because they know the tune. And so it is with our lives. Sometimes the lyrics change like the times of our life change. But the tune, the melody, the rhythm, is God's love is with us in all things. God's love enfolds us. God sent Jesus into the world. And here we bring ourselves to offer to him. And Jesus seeks to give us, even as we give ourselves to him, Jesus seeks to give us love, grace, joy. That never changes, and that is always the gift we are given here at the communion table. Let us pray. Creator of heaven and earth, you have revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ, our light and salvation. You sent a star to guide the Magi to where the Christ was born, and your signs and witnesses in every age and through all the world have led your people from far places to his light. On this day of Epiphany, we celebrate the coming of those who sought a Savior. In eating this bread and drinking from this cup, we celebrate that we know a Savior, Jesus Christ. In the presence of the Holy Spirit, let us commune in the light of the word. Will you join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is for you. After supper, he took a cup and he poured it out and gave it to them and said, Take and drink, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins wherever you are in your life. Come to the table and know the grace and peace and love of Christ for you. As we come to communion, to take communion, there are stations on either side where you may take the bread and the cup or if you so choose to stay where you are with the self-contained cup and bread, there is that option as well. Come, let us share the Lord's Supper together.
We have been blessed to be together, to bring the gifts of our worship, our lives, our hearts before Christ our Lord. Now it is time for us to go out into the world and seek where God sends us. Yes, ma'am. So we are going to break down Christmas next weekend, Saturday at 9 o'clock. We need everybody's help because we're going to clear out this whole side over here to clean out the storage on it because it's a big mess right now and we can't walk through it. And we just need your help. Anybody, you know, that can come at 9 o'clock next Saturday. Thank you, Sonia. So, Karen, I'm sure that's going to be in the newsletter. Let me just say this. The beauty that you see up here is the work of the gift of the Spirit working through Sonia. She would want me to say that because that's where she says the ideas come from, the inspiration comes from. But it is also largely her work that makes this happen Sunday in, Sunday out. So if you can, please show up so that we might help her not have taking this down all be on her and give a gift to Sonia in return for all the gifts she gives us. And that's a wonderful note to end on. Take your gifts and go out into the world. Amen. Let's stand and sing. Go now and be true.